One of the things that I love about humanity is our ability to care for those who are less fortunate. We see it all the time. Acts of kindness, acts of goodwill, really makes you restore your faith in the ability of us as human beings. But don't get it twisted. Sometimes others can go overboard, so much so that they wanna take advantage. When you're taking advantage of, you don't want to participate and the element of humanity that allows you to continue to give and help others. This is the most evident in Chicago right now with the migrant crisis. There were so many people, African-Americans, Latinos, everybody included, that wanted to see these migrants be helped. Wanna know why? They felt sorry for them. But then things started happening like this. A Westside Social Service Organization urging Governor Pritzker to take action. They say the governor should include all women of color in the state's budget. The Austin People's Action Center said it was one of the first groups on the West Side to provide food, clothing, medical, and personal supplies to migrants. But the organization's founder says the proposed spending plan, which she says appropriates $1,000 per month for migrant women, demonstrates a flaw in the budget. We need answers and reassurance that the very communities who are in need and have always been in need are not left out of the equation. The Austin People's Action Center says the needs of African-American women are still going unmet. They say migrants should be helped along with all other women of color in Illinois. That's right. These black women who have a charity organization find themselves being left out of their own city when they're trying to help others. But then there is a more alarming situation going on. There is this particular lady who went to a city council meeting and she said something that was very alarming. Let's play the clip. It's 68,000 Chicagoans that are homeless. Majority of them are black. Our black kids are running rampant out here. Record carjackings, record auto theft and robberies. Downtown has three to four legal families on every block begging for work and selling Kit Kat bars after a billion dollars was spent on them. Where is that money? She mentioned over a billion dollars have been spent. Where is that money? Whoa, a billion dollars? When I first heard that, I really didn't pay attention to it, but I paid attention to it now. But then as I kept doing my research, something happened with NBC7 Chicago. Now, NBC7 Chicago is a news station. All NBCs are news, entertainment, things like that. But I found out that they are suing the city of Chicago. What for? Let's find out. NBC5 investigates is taking the city of Chicago to court to obtain records related to the migrant crisis. For months, our team has reported on problems inside migrant shelters here in the city and has exposed how millions in taxpayer dollars were being spent. And tonight, we're trying to understand why certain city records were withheld. Investigative reporter Bennett Haberly joining us now with more. Bennett. Yeah, Allison, Stephan, public records are vital to our reporting and to the public's right to know. In our quest to understand how the city responded to the migrant crisis, we combed over thousands of pages of reports and in doing so, realized we may be missing some more. And now we're suing to obtain what should be public. Because they can't get access to the records. But this next thing is gonna shock you because here's what they did find out. Now tonight, NBC5 investigates continuing to follow the money, hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money spent on the city's migrant crisis. Now, while the city has created a website to track migrant spending, our team found there are still many aspects of this that are just shrouded in secrecy. Here's investigative reporter Bennett Haverly. As migrants begin to move out of shelters, invoices are still rolling in. The city of Chicago spent nearly $300 million on the migrant crisis so far, with more than $206 million paid to Kansas-based favorite health care staffing, which staffs the migrant shelters. But not much is known about how these buildings are selected or how much the property owners earn from lease agreements. Answering that is difficult, in part because of how the city structured its migrant operation. It feels a little more translucent than transparent. Right, you'll get some information, but not the full picture. The city's migrant spending website shows more than $45 million have gone to a Louisville company, Equitable Social Solutions. That's where a number of those leases are. So. Mayor Brandon Johnson's office says Equitable helps facilitate and identify shelters through the help of another company, ReloShare. For months, NBC5 Investigates has asked for copies of the leases 
for the 27 shelters the city operated. Through a series of Freedom of Information Act requests, we received just nine agreements. Those missing include lease agreements for the city's largest and most expensive shelters. You should not have to go through the hoops that you've gone through just to get through, get to partial information. Joe Ferguson is Chicago's former inspector general. He's now with the Civic Federation, a nonpartisan government research group. We absolutely should know at every step of the way where the public's money is going to so that we can make an assessment as to whether or not it is being. They found out that $300 million was being spent, but they didn't know exactly where it was being spent because some of the information was blocked out. Now, Alderman Bill is an African-American alderman representing a lot of the South side of Chicago. And he has a problem with the lack of transparency in Brandon Johnson's progressive administration. So he said this. President, Madam President, we have three items on the agenda. Um, however, my desire is only to ask for one item to be voted on in the affirmative. Um, unlike other people in this body, I don't wish to silence the people from having a voice as far as the Bring Home Chicago ordinance. I want the voters to hear that ordinance and have a chance to vote on it. However, I do believe that we need to have the people also to vote on whether or not they want to remain a sanctuary city. The reason I have brought this with some of my colleagues to the floor is not to eliminate Chicago as a sanctuary city. But what it is is to find some kind of compromise and threshold to stop the bleeding that we're undertaking right now. When you look at what the city is dealing with, we're spending, when we had 12,000 migrants, we were spending $31 million a month at that time. We have 20,000 migrants today. So what is the price tag on that now? And we can't get solid answers to what is costing us right now. Now, we're being asked to vote for a budget that we can't get answers to as far as how much money we're gonna be potentially spending next year on the migrants. We're saying, we're hoping we get money from the state. I'm hoping we get money from the federal government. I'm hoping money just falls out of the sky. But those are hopes and dreams. We have a physical responsibility to vote on a budget that is sound going forward to get us through 2024, and the budget that's being presented to us does not solve that problem. And so all I'm asking is that we give the people of this great city of Chicago a chance to have a voice on this issue. Now, I guarantee you that if Harold Washington was here today, what he signed into law as an executive order is not what he intended for today. Now, I wanna to go to another alderman, and he points out something that was very interesting to me. More transparency and accountability from the mayor's office regarding the migrant crisis is something city council members have been demanding for months. Some complaining the media gets shelter exit data before alders. Although the press is getting it daily, uh, the council and most of the members are not. We just want to make sure that that's kind of in line of the same reporting that's already being out there. What did this alderman said? He said, hey, listen, the TV stations are getting the information before we're getting the information. And do you want to know how much aldermans make? Let's use our good brother, Alderman Bill. His salary as a public official is on the website. I believe this year he's getting $142,000 a year. Give him a round of applause. Hey, not bad, Alderman. I see you out there balling. You know what I'm saying? I see you out there, player. I'm not mad. So the city is paying the aldermen to make change in their wards. They're being paid to do so. But the TV stations are getting the information for the public before these guys are. And I get that news stations want to hold public administrations accountable, and that's great. 
because in many countries in Africa or in other places of the world, you know, if you were to get that information and put it out, you know, gunshots, a person, a news station might get killed. So it's great that these news stations are being transparent with the information. What's bad is the people who are elected in the city to serve the community are not getting the information. So then how can they be effective? How can they say, hey, listen, this is wrong, or this is not right, or this is right, right? And Mayor Brandon Johnson always is dodging questions, always dodging this, always dodging that. He just looks hella shady. So it seems like this guy is even worse than Lori Lightfoot. And all of these are Democrats, right? This is the thing. They're all under the same political party and they're having these many problems. So guys, what do you think you should boy should do Jackson back at it again with another episode of Fair Use? I'm out.